All right, so today we're going to talk about sprints. Now, obviously, a lot of people never do sprints. A lot of people say, I'm not a sprinter, or I'll never do own sprints. And my personal philosophy is that most people never, ever do sprints, ever, even if they're good at them or bad at them, because they just don't seem to think about it. But I genuinely think it's probably one of the best things you could do in winter is sprints. Because when you think about it in a road race, let's say, like the biggest determiner of your outcome, probably your FTP, right? Or, or a crit. Obviously, we're going to ignore technical ability, but physically wise. And then it's just sprint. Like how many times, especially in the UK, let's say, or a lot of places where there aren't, you know, super hilly road races, it comes down to a small kick. Um, and even on mountaintop finishes, it often does come down to a kick. So having a better sprint is definitely a very worthwhile investment. So back in the day when I didn't uh, crash and uh, actually had some form, I could hit 1100 watts for a second. And for five seconds, I think I have my best power here over, over a thousand watts. So obviously I weigh like 60 kilos. So, you know, it's okay watts per kilo, but in the grand scheme of things, it's pretty bad. But it allows me to, you know, get top tens on races and stuff like that. But since my crash, my sprint's been really bad, but it's just, I think it's one of those things which can get better so quickly. Um, so we're going to go through some, some efforts. So these were efforts recently. So about three weeks ago, and you can see my max power is 791. These are 20 second sprints, but I was still trying to go for all out max power. I couldn't crack over 800 on any of these. Um, like my max power for the day was 825. Um, but really not great numbers. Um, if we look at sort of my 20 second power, it was like 700 watts or something. So nothing horrendous, but again, not great. Um, and then the following week, um, I started to do 10 second sprints. Um, it says my max power is 935, which is pretty good. But if we look at the sprints, it was actually only 907. But even so, that's gone up 70 watts in a week. And you might say, oh, you're doing 10 seconds versus 20 seconds. So maybe we'll give it a little bit. But you can see the gains are very, very large. Obviously, compared to my max ever, still quite far off. But in terms of coming back from, you know, obviously broken leg and stuff, it's not too bad. But I think my point on this is that sprints, you can make a lot of gains because people don't do them. Even if you have a terrible sprint, even if you can't hit a thousand watts, which I currently can't, it doesn't matter. Because if you do any sprints, you know, like literally six sprints a week is what I'm doing, like eight, or eight sprints a week if they're 10 seconds or six, if they're 20 seconds and like they make gains. Like you can see here, I've done my eight sprints. 907 was the max. Um, if we look at my peak five second power, 885, so not too bad. Then obviously this was this week. Um, and you can see my max power has gone up to 931. So again, that's like a pretty decent increase. Um, and my max power is 885. So pretty similar max five second power, but my um, training peaks actually said that it went slightly higher. Um, it said, I think my max power is 950 on training peaks. So there's always slight variations just on the file recording, but you can see like it's gone up a hundred Watts in two weeks. Like that's, that's pretty good going in my opinion. And I think that this is my point is that you should do sprints. Even if you're a great sprinter, you should do a couple sprints. I mean, famously Mark Cavs, Mark, Mark Cavendish said he never does sprints. Okay. Fair enough. But you know, like. Yeah, but then he said when he got older, he started doing them. And I think for most people, because you just never do them, just whack them in a ride. Like it's, you know, it doesn't, people, I think, get into the point where they just focus on threshold, 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 and like, you know, all that. But then it's like, just throw in a couple sprints a ride. Like if you just do one, which I do, I'm doing now, I'm going to stop and just do slightly less sprints um, in the coming weeks, um, mainly because a lot of my goals are time trial oriented. But even so, like, just one sprint session a week for like four weeks. And for me, it's get, got like a hundred watts better. And like, I don't seem to go away either because I don't think you need much maintenance with sprints. It's not like, you know, with a threshold, if you just never do high intensity, it just goes with sprints. If you whack like one or two a week, maybe like, you know, a couple on a ride once or, once or twice a week, you're probably going to keep it. So that's, that's my theory anyway, is that people don't do enough sprints. Um, if we look at my max power carb, I mean, like, I'm not a sprinty boy. Like for 10 seconds, my best ever, I think, is like not even 900 watts. But like the gains you can make are pretty big. And like if I can increase that, you know, another 100 watts, which I think would be quite hard, like my max power would then hit, you know, well over 1100 watts. That would be pretty good um, if I could do that. So I think realistically, it's a very good bang for your butt. It also does help your like one minute power as well, having, you know, being a bit more punchy. 
And as I said before, I think it's one of the largest determinants on race outcomes after threshold, in my personal opinion, because most races come down a bunch of sprints in some regard or another. And having a high kick, okay, you might like is very important. Obviously, you might say, oh, it's the end of the race. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I understand that. But if you look at some of the results that I've got myself, I managed to like come quite close to very, very good sprinters just because my sprint doesn't drop off as much. So I think but having a better outright sprint is just always better. And it makes all the accelerations better. Like in a crit, every time you're out of corner, like if we look at if we look at this race here, like the number of times I would have hit over a thousand watts or over nine hundred watts is huge. But obviously, you know the higher max max sprint you have, so this is the race here, um, like it's pretty surgy. Like you can see, there's always like if you scroll to any part of the race, there's going to be bits which are over nine hundred watts. So the easier that is, then it's just it's going to be a lot like less fatiguing. Um, and if you watch like NorCal cycling, for instance. He can sprint out a corner of a thousand watts and it's not that deep because his max is like 1500 and imagine if that was the same with you like your max you know if you went up 100 watts then every time you get sprint out a corner it's just not as tiring so I, personally i think it's a really really big thing to focus on in winter and it's definitely something that is underrated by a lot of people because they see the pros they say oh, they never do it but it's like yeah okay fair enough they don't but often like they're just so they you know they keep that sprint forever and I'd say for like an amateur, like, okay, racing helps your sprint, definitely. My sprint got a lot better in 2019 because I raced more. But I still think that doing it in winter is good. I, I always try and do some sprints in winter. Um, and then also the other thing that I haven't mentioned is going to the gym. But you don't even need to go to the gym. So I've just obviously like doing my, some exercises at home because gyms were closed in the UK for a month. Um which is a bit annoying. Um, but I was just doing exercise at home, single weight stuff, like just squatting my turbo, like random stuff. But like, it does help definitely. Um, and I, I'm also a big fan of the gym as well, for off season for sure. Um, not just for sprint, but also threshold and other stuff. But we'll, we might make another video of that. But hey, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Let me know if you do any sprint workouts, if you've got big gains in your sprint or anything else, um, because I think it's definitely underrated by a lot of people. Cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one.